Just a few days ago, Christopher, you had a piece published on nofilmschool.com, mm -hmm. which was 10 production saving tips for filming in remote locations. And it was excellent advice. And I was just wondering if we could talk about a few of them, sure. what maybe some of which you consider the most important. Uh, I think the most important thing, hands down, is uh, just the, the need to do your homework and prepare before your trip because that information that you get from that process informs all of the decisions you're going to have to make throughout the whole production, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, what's the climate like, what's your resources there, you know, where, where are uh, the emergency facilities, like what's the culture like, all of those things, you know, they inform everything from what kind of equipment you bring to, uh, you know, what kind of clothing you bring, like all that stuff, but also logistics in terms of transportation and, um, you know, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think it just really informs, informs it all, you know. I think another one might be uh, just the safety issues, really, you know, in terms of preparing with getting the right insurance in place, uh, just in case, you know, unforeseen circumstances. And also, you know, what you need to bring in terms of taking care of your well-being and what information you need in, in terms of being evacuated or something like that, should something go wrong. So, um, yeah, I think those are, are probably the two obviously big ones. Uh, and then there's a lot of, you know, sort of follow-on uh, pieces of advice just about gear and what, what to consider with that. I thought was interesting was um, you said just don't have your gear in bags that scream, hey, I'm a filmmaker right. and this is expensive gear. And maybe can you talk about some ways to kind of downplay the fact that you are wearing essentially thousands of dollars <laughs> worth of gear on you? Right, yeah. That's a, good, that's a really tricky one because um, you at times you just can't hide it. But definitely I, I opt not to take Pelican cases or, or any sort of hard case. And... You know, I, for carry-ons, uh, well, I, I carry on my camera always, and, and I'll just have like a soft backpack uh, camera bag. And I think that's actually just way more practical than Pelican case anyways. Um, but it also tends to look just like a big backpack, which is nice. And then for checked stuff, I, you know, just buy, opt for really large rolly luggage, you know, like you would normally just see with the traveler. And I just get one that's long enough to fit my tripod in. And... I, you know, make it all fit into those basically and will pack in clothes and stuff around the gear to help pad it and, and everything. And then I'll use a TSA approved lock to lock it up, um, which, you know, when you get to developing countries and I, I, I don't really know how risky this is, but I've heard stories of, you know, people who work at the airlines stealing things out of bags or not even them, just like, you know, hotels or anywhere else it, it is a thing that can happen and so I think having a little bit of security with the lock uh, at least at the very least gives you peace of mind so that's great advice and also too when you mentioned TSA so 2017 you know getting through the checkpoint is probably more and more stringent than ever before mm -hmm. what are some tips on protecting uh, what's going through and and what if your bag is opened up you know, mine's been opened up and I didn't have any gear in it, yeah. but it, uh, you know, so there's... It's always, if you have gear, it's they're always are going to open your bag. I mean, particularly, I've noticed uh, tripod bags get open every single time uh, that I've experienced it. Anyway. And I traveled a lot with my gear over the years, um, not just for this project, but for my another film I'm working on. And also back in the tiny days, I was sort of splitting my time between New York and Colorado. And there was a while that I brought literally everything I used to make movies with me oh, everywhere no. I went, including my computer and hard drives and like to edit on. And, and uh, so I have, a, I have a fair amount of experience doing that. And um, yeah, my experience is they always check your bags. I think the only thing I've ever really run into was I've had some Allen keys and I guess the largest size of that Allen key set uh, wasn't approved to be carried on. So they took, they confiscated that one. But I think that's the, yeah, I think the tools, your carry on is the thing that you have to worry about. And, uh, you know, so having these sort of sharp objects or tools, you might as well just put those in your, in your checked luggage and then you won't risk, you know, having them confiscated. Right. And what about a look like you belong? I mean, that probably varies. And I'm not even sure if I'm paraphrasing for one of the tips that you mentioned, but, you know, fitting into the culture of the place, mm -hmm. it's kind of like if you're somewhere in Venice Beach and you're filming, you want to maybe look the part like you're going right. to the beach, not in full, you know, 
regalia. So yeah, what... yeah. You know, I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's sort of impossible, particularly in Cambodia, to really feel like, to really look like you belong, but looking like you aren't fresh off the boat, you know, like that you are aware of your surroundings at all times and that you, you basically want to make yourself look like not an easy target. And I, you know, rather than being a tourist who doesn't necessarily know any better, but like, you know, if it looks like you are knowledgeable about how things work in the country and you're aware and, you know, that, that's when I think people are just going to say, ah, that, one, that guy's just a little too difficult or that girl. And, and instead <laughs> go after the tourist. Not that way they should go after that. We don't want that, but, you no, know. Right. Right. Well, you can always tell even in L.A. and there's so many people who's a tourist and who's not by how they're kind of looking around in exactly. awe, like we're animals in a zoo sort of thing. But you also talked about maybe riding in, in taxis and where to put your bags. Right. Definitely. Yeah. I think uh, taking uh, it, it's more expensive. I mean, everything you do as a filmmaker in foreign countries is going to be more expensive because you have considerations that you uh, don't when you're just traveling, which is mostly way more luggage and, and more expensive gear. So I usually end up taking single taxis, which in Cambodia is pretty uncommon and reserved for people who have a lot of money. Uh, normally they share taxis or they take tuk-tuks or they ride on the back of, of motorcycles. And, um, and I've done all of those things in Cambodia. But when I first, what I normally do is when I arrive with all of my gear and bags, I take a taxi to the hotel where I drop it off. And if I don't need it, then I'll, you know, tuk-tuk or, or ride a motorcycle around town. But when I'm going out on a shoot, I bring only what I need for that shoot. And um, because this is a Verite shoot, oftentimes I don't, I don't always bring my, uh, my tripod with me because I do a lot, mostly handheld stuff. So in that case, I can just bring my backpack and, and get everything in there that I need uh, for the day. And a lot of my additional gear is more for interviews and things like that, you know, like lighting or... or um, cables or you know hard drives that i can offload to later things like that that i don't need to shoot um and then when i ride in tuk tuks with my gear or bags i make sure to keep them in the middle of the tuk tuk uh because people will ride up next to them and they'll have one person on the back of a motorcycle who will reach over and grab your bag and then ride away and your tuk tuk's never going to catch a motorcycle so um you know you just want to kind of be aware that that's a possibility uh, keep your hand on your bag, you know, and just keep your eye out for suspicious motorcycles who might be trying to, to grab your bags. Well, last but not least, what about uh, making polite conversation and someone asks, hey, what are you doing here? What, what, are you, what are you up to? Do you disclose, oh, I'm a documentary filmmaker, or you just say I'm, I'm traveling and want to try out my new camera? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think that really depends on who's asking. Little kids you know, particularly in these uh, developing countries, you know, just like love seeing, you know, not only Westerners, but just like when you have a camera, they know about, you know, TV and cameras and what that means. And so they're like, get really excited and they want to come over and see what you're doing. And I just, I love to like, uh, you know, show it to them and like, you let them like play with it sometimes if I, if I can, if I have time. Uh, if it's somebody who looks like they're in a place of authority, I, I do tend to downplay it a little bit only because you don't want to call too much attention to yourself. You never know who uh, is legitimate, who's not, who, you know, just because you can't help but not know those things in a, in a country you're not familiar with. And just like you wouldn't do that here, you know, if, if you didn't know why somebody was asking you questions in a part of town you're not normally in, you would, you probably, you know, you try to keep it kind of close to your chest what you're doing. But, you know, I just say like, oh, I'm filming, um, you know, uh, actually, I, 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 I just, I don't actually say what the project is. I say what I'm filming. So somebody be like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm filming this fisherman <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> That's great, right. Yeah, uh -huh. because you're answering the question, but it's, you know, not giving away too much.